Okay then my friends, so what are loops? Well, loops are a common theme in pretty much every programming language that you come across. And they're a way that we can execute a block of code over and over and over a set number of times. Now you might be thinking, why the hell would you want to do that? So here's a few examples. So imagine, first of all, that we have, I don't know, five blocks and we want to cycle through those blocks and we want to output some kind of template for each of those blocks, right? Now, we know the number of blocks, we know that there's five of them, so we know that we want to execute a certain piece of code five times, right? So for that we'd use a loop. We don't have to write the code out five times manually, we write it out once and we loop through that code five times over. And the way we could do that is by using one of several different kinds of loops available to us in PHP. Now the first type I want to talk about is the for loop. This is quite a common loop that you're going to come across. So what this does is essentially say, okay, for these conditions right here, I want to fire this code inside the code block. Now inside this condition over here, inside the brackets, we have three different statements. You can see them separated by the semicolons. The first one right here, we're initializing a counter variable. This variable is going to be responsible for keeping track of how many times we're looping through this bit of code, right? And we're setting it originally to be zero because at the very start when we initialize this for loop we've not yet ran through it once we're starting it at zero the second little bit of code here the second statement is the condition for which we want to cycle through the loop so while this condition here is true we're going to continue to loop through this bit of code down here. We're going to go over and over for as long as, in this case, i, the i variable that we just initialized, is less than 5. So as long as that's the case, we're going to keep on cycling through this code and echo out some template, right? The third thing over here, the third bit of code, is saying, OK, well, each time this bit of code fires, each time around the loop, I want you to take this i variable, this counter that we initialized over here as zero to begin with, and every time you run this loop and execute this code, I want you to add one to that variable, okay? So to begin with, it's zero, we initialize it as zero. Is i less than five? Yes, it is. We're gonna run the code and we're gonna increase i by one, okay? So we'll come around again. Is i less than five? Well, yes, it's one now. So we're still going to run this and we increase i by one again. So now it's two. We come around again. Two is less than five. We do the code. We increase it all the way until i is now five. And at this point, five is not less than five. Five is equal to five. And so therefore, this for loop does not run again. OK, we continue down with the code further in the file and we don't execute this again. So now we've executed this five times, right? So that is a for loop. Now then, it might be that we don't know how many different things we have that we want to cycle through to output a certain amount of code. We knew previously we wanted to output it five times, but imagine we had some kind of array of blogs and we don't know how many blogs are in that array. We just know that we want to cycle through them and output a bit of code, a template for each individual blog. Okay, so we can't say in this for loop for as long as i is less than 10 or i is less than 15 because there could be 25 blogs, 50 blogs, we don't know. We want to output them all. So in this case, we could just say, okay, well again, initially, the counter variable i is gonna be equal to zero. And by the way, it doesn't have to be called i, it can be called x or counter or whatever you want. This is typically what we call it, i or some other letter. We're initially setting it to zero, and then the condition that we're going to continue to execute this block of code in the loop is now going to be for as long as i is less than the count of blocks. So now, even if we don't know how many there are to begin with, we can just count them. And we can say for as long as i is less than the count of blocks, then we're going to continue to run this code. And again, each time around, i is going to increase until eventually i is not going to be less than the number of blogs in the array and we won't execute the code anymore. We've looped through it enough and we'll carry on down the file. Okay, so that's how we can combat that scenario. Now, one more thing, we can use a for each loop, which is going to do a similar kind of thing. If we don't know the length of something, we can say, well, okay, we'll use a for each loop. And a for each loop cycles through an array or a collection of data 
and it says for each element inside that array, for each value inside that array, I'm going to execute some code. So the length of the array, that kind of takes care of itself. How many times the loop runs takes care of itself because we're saying for each value in the array, we're doing it. Okay. Now the parameters here, these two things, they are slightly different. We don't have the initial variable, the counter variable. We don't need that anymore because we're running this code for each individual element. We don't need that counter. But what we are saying is the array that we want to cycle through, which is blocks over here, that's what we're cycling through. And each time that we cycle through this array on an individual item, we refer to that individual item that we're currently cycling over as a blog. Now this can be called whatever you want, but I like to call this the singular of whatever this is. This is blogs and each time we cycle around something, we're using an individual blog. So we say blogs as blog and this keyword as is needed as well because we're saying for each time around, we're referring to the individual item as a blog. Now inside this code, if we wanted, we could have access to this blog variable, which would be either this or this or this or this or some of the blog as we're cycling through them. Okay. So that's the basics of how these different loops work. There are other loops as well, and we're going to cover a few of them now in the code. All right then. So now hopefully you know how loops generally work. I'd like to go through a few different examples. So first of all, I'm going to create a variable called ninjas and set this equal to a simple indexed array. So I'm going to have various different values in here. The first one is going to be Sean. Then I'll do Ryu. And then finally, I'm going to do Yoshi again. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to do a for loop and I want to cycle through each one of these things right here inside this ninjas array. And I want to output them to the screen. So I'm going to say for, and then in brackets, first of all, we set our counter variable. I'm going to call it I and set it equal to zero. That's what the counter is going to start on. Then the condition for which we want to cycle through this loop, which is going to be I is less than the count of ninjas. Okay. So this will work out as I is less than three because there's three things in there. So as long as I is less than three, then we're going to continue to cycle through this loop. And each time around, obviously we want to increase I by one. So we use the increment operator to do that, to add one to I. Okay. And each time around, what I'd like to do is echo out that particular ninja. Now, how can I do this? I can't just say echo out the ninja because we've not declared that variable. All we know is ninjas, but what we can do is say echo out ninjas and then use the index of the ninja we want to output. Now we know that it's going to be I, isn't it? Because I starts as zero for the first element, then we add one. So the second element that we cycle through, this is going to be one. Then the third one is going to be two. So zero, one and two. So we can use I right here to grab the ninja that we want to output the current ninja that we're cycling through. That makes sense, right? Okay. So let me do that now and test it in the browser. So refresh. And now we can see one gigantic string, Sean Rai Yoshi. Okay. But fair enough. Let's put a BR next to each one of these. So I'm going to use concatenation. Remember that's a dot or a full stop. And then I'm going to concatenate a little string. And this is just going to be a BR tag from HTML. So each time around, we're going to have a line break between them. Okay. So we have the ninja, then BR, it's going to go to the next line for the next ninja and so forth. So save that and refresh. And now we can see Sean, Ryu, Yoshi on different lines. So that's how we can cycle through these using a for loop, right? Now I want to show you another way to do it this time using a for each loop, which we've briefly discussed as well. So this time for each. And remember, first of all, we say the array that we want to cycle through, which is ninjas, then as, and we're going to refer to each individual item as we cycle through it, each one of these values as ninja. So if we now echo out ninja, and I'm going to concatenate this with a BR tag as well, like so. So each one goes on a new line again. Echo should be spelled correctly. Now, if we do this, and that should be ninja. What we're doing is echoing out the item that we're cycling on each time. So we're cycling through ninjas and each time around, we're referring to the individual item as ninja. And we're echoing that out every time we cycle through it. Okay. So this should have the same result as this. Save that 
and preview and we still get the same result cool so this i think is actually easier to write and to use than this thing even though they're doing the same thing so most of the time when we're cycling through an array i'm going to be using for each but obviously you're free to use whichever method you prefer okay then. so that's those two loops now i'm going to do something a little bit more complicated what i'm going to do is just copy some data and i'm going to paste it over here because i know it wouldn't benefit you watching me type this out from scratch but essentially what i'm doing here is creating a multi-dimensional array the whole thing is one array and inside we have several different arrays okay and each one of these arrays refers to a single product they have a name variable and they have a price variable okay so this is an associative array this is this is etc but this surrounding array is just an indexed array make sense we've seen this before so now what i'd like to do is use for each to cycle through these and refer to each one of these as a product much like we did ninjas as ninja we'll do products as product so when we cycle through each one of these is going to be referred to as that single product variable okay so let's do that for each and then we're cycling through products and each time around we're referring to each one as a single product again you can name this what you want this thing right here i like to call it the singular of whatever we're cycling through it makes sense to me okay so inside what i'd like to do is echo the product name and then the product price next to it so we're going to concatenate the product name with the product price so let's do that we'll say echo and we can access the individual product using this variable this is the one we're currently cycling through then we're using square bracket notation to get the name of that product remember that's this key right here so that will be this 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 and this as we cycle through them then we're going to concatenate to that first of all a string and that is going to be space hyphen space so it's going to be the product name then a hyphen then we'll concatenate again this time the product price so product in square brackets price like so and then after that we'll echo again a br tag so br so we go to the new line each time around okay then so let's save this and see if it works refresh and now we can see we get the product name dash and the price each time around we're cycling through all of these different products and for each one we're outputting the product name using this local variable and the product price and then a br tag does that make sense cool okay then so i'd like to show you one other type of loop and that is a while loop and we've not seen these yet so a while loop is similar to the other kinds of loops we just use it to cycle through a particular block of code while a certain condition is true is very much like a for loop except that we don't specify this stuff right here and this stuff inside the parentheses we do it somewhere else so let me give you an example i'm going to say while and then in brackets we'll use a local variable i'm going to call this i again and then i'm going to say is less than the count of products so that's the array we just created up here so for as long as i is less than how many elements are inside this products array right here then we're going to cycle through this code and each time around i'm just going to echo out the product name so i can say echo and then the products array i'm going to use the i variable okay because obviously we're going to increment this as we go through we're going to find a way to do that and that's going to refer to either zero one two three four or five as we cycle through them and then we want to output the name of that product like so i'm also going to echo out a br tag so we go to a new line each time around but i'm not going to run this yet for two reasons first of all we've not declared i i doesn't exist yet we're just saying while i is less than the count of products but we've not actually set i anywhere in the for loop we set this local variable i to zero but we've not done that down here now we don't do that inside the while loop we do it outside of the loop so let me just above the while loop say i is equal to zero okay so now we have initialized that variable it's no longer a local variable inside the loop we've declared it outside here but we have it at least it's starting at zero but i'm still not going to run this because we're going to get caught in what's known now as an infinite loop if we do run it so what's that well think about this if we run this now 
we're saying while i is less than the count of products run this code so i is zero so it's going to run this code and it's going to run it over and over and over and over because i is never changing it's always zero and it's always less than the count of products okay so that would be an infinite loop and it could crash your browser so don't run this code however if we after each iteration through after each loop if we say i plus oops i plus plus then what we're doing each time around is saying okay take the current value of i and increase it by one okay increase it by one every time around so it's going to go from zero to one to two to three until eventually i is not going to be less than the count of products so this is quite similar to the for loop except we don't initialize i inside here we initialize it outside and we don't increment i over here inside the parentheses we increment it inside the loop okay so if we save this now we should see all of the product names let's refresh like so cool okay so there's one more thing i'd like to show you when it comes to loops and that's actually looping through code in the html so let's just comment this stuff out for a minute i'm going to keep this products array because we're going to use it down here but a lot of the time what we'd like to do inside our html templates is loop through some data that we have and then output some kind of html template for each item in that array okay so if it was blogs we might output a div tag then the blog title in an h2 and then a p tag with some blog content etc for each individual blog so what we're going to do is cycle through these products right here and we're going to output a different html template for each individual product so then first of all i'm going to create an h1 tag just call this products like so and then underneath that i'm going to create a ul tag and what i'd like to do now is output an li tag okay for each product in the products array so i'm going to use some php tags right here we know we can embed our php inside the html template it's going to return a resulting code for us and what i'm going to do is say for each and then we're cycling through the products and each time around we refer to each one as product and we're going to do something for each one of these products in the array now we don't then open these up and output some html inside here because we're inside php tags instead what we do is we take that back up here and we delete the closing tag right here so we have the start of a for each loop with the opening tag but then we need to close it later on so let me down here do php and close that okay so that means in between we're not inside php tags and we can just output some html code so what i'm going to do is output first of all an h3 and inside this h3 i want to output the product name so i have access now to this individual product each time around i'm going to say php and we're going to echo the product name so that's dollar product and then the name value does that make sense so we open our php tags to start the loop then we close our php tags then we do an h3 and inside the h3 we have more php tags to output the product name underneath that i'm going to use a p tag and inside this will output the product price so i'll do a pound sign first of all since these are going to all be in pounds then we'll do our php oops let's remove that php tags and inside the php tags i want to echo the product and i want the price property okay so then now we're outputting these two things and then we're closing the loop at the bottom does that make sense we open the loop at the top using php tags we close the loop at the bottom using separate php tags meaning in between we can just output html so it's going to cycle through all the products and output this html template for each individual product so let's save that now preview over here and see if this works and we can see we have the h1 first of all then we have all of these individual products we have an h3 and a p tag for each one of these does that make sense inspect the element just to make sure this is right and we can see h3p h3p so when we use a loop inside the html template we can output bits of template code html code for each item inside the array